Hello, my name is Grigori Sikonomou, and I'm a postdoc in the Probe Lab. And my name is Michael Altermatt, and I'm a graduate student in the Grotter Neural Lab at Caltech. We are here to give you a quick summary of our recent work on how the serotonergic raphi promotes sleep in zebrafish and mice. Serotonin is a very famous and well-studied molecule in neuroscience. It is synthesized in the raphe nuclei, which reside in the brainstem, but send projections throughout the brain. Serotonin is involved in a variety of behaviors and processes, including aggression, appetite, mood regulation, memory, fear, and our personal favorite, sleep. Because serotonin is involved in so many processes, it can be challenging to dissect its role in a particular behavior. Therefore, we began our efforts to elucidate the role of serotonin in sleep by using Zibrafis Lavi, the favored model system of the Probe Lab. Zibrafis Lavi show a robust sleep-wake cycle and have a nervous system very similar to that of mammals, but they lack many of the complex behaviors of mammals. This makes them a great system for the study of basic innate behaviors such as sleep. Here, on the left, you see the brain of a five-day-old zebrafish, stand for serotonin. There's a prominent horseshoe-like structure in the hypothalamus, and in the opening of the horseshoe, you can see a vertical column of cells which comprises the raphi. On the right, you see the brain of a fish carrying a mutation for the gene TPH2. In the absence of TPH2, the raphi do not synthesize serotonin, and the elaborate serotonergic innervation of the brain is gone. How do such animals sleep? To find out, we use an infrared camera to track the wake sleep patterns of zebrafish over day and night, and discovered that TPS2 mutants had reduced sleep compared to controls. We then used an inducible genetic ablation system to destroy the raphe of zebrafish larvae, and found that the ablated animals had reduced sleep. At this point in the Gradinaro lab, we decided to try our luck in mice. We fitted animals with EMG and EEG probes to assess their sleep patterns and then expressed either YFP or a toxin specifically in the raphe. When we looked at the sleep of these animals, we found that ablation of the raphe increased wakefulness and reduced sleep similar to fish. So, serotonin and the raphe are required for sleep. But is activation of the raphe sufficient to drive sleep? In zebrafish, we expressed cyanodopsin in the raphe and use blue light to activate the neurons. Blue light initially startles the animals, but once they settle, you can see that fish expressing cyanodopsin sleep more compared to controls. We then performed a similar experiment in mice by expressing channel rhodopsin specifically in the raphe and used light to stimulate these neurons with a pattern similar to their endogenous firing rate. Under this simulation pattern, channel rhodopsin's positive animals showed an increase in sleep and a reduction in wakefulness. Interestingly, when we stimulated the raphe at a high frequency, which is observed in specific contexts, we saw an increase in wakefulness and a reduction in sleep during the day. Based on what we have told you so far, it seems that the raphe promotes sleep. However, it has long been known that the raphe are active during wakefulness, and they are often cited as part of the ascending arousal system, a group of neuronal populations that are thought to promote wakefulness. Using fiber photometry, a technique that allows us to monitor the activity of large number of neurons at the same time, we found that the raphe are indeed most active during wakefulness and less active during sleep. Using electrophysiology in zebrafish, we also found that the raphe are more active during the day and less active during the night when fish are normally asleep. These results generate an apparent paradox. How can neurons that are active during wakefulness be required for sleep and act to promote sleep? Michel Jouvet, one of the pioneers in the study of sleep, had an interesting idea. As days alternate with nights, our sleep patterns are regulated by the circadian arousal drive, which is high during the day and low at night, and homeostatic sleep pressure, which builds up during the day and dissipates at night as we sleep. If the raphi are involved in building this homeostatic sleep pressure, as Michel Jouvet proposed, things start making sense. Raphi neurons are more active during the day to build up sleep pressure, and less active during the night when sleep pressure dissipates. If this hypothesis is correct, one will expect that interfering with the serotonin system will affect homeostatic sleep pressure. Indeed, when we sleep deprived zebrafish larvae and calculate the ratio of recovery sleep to low sleep, we found that TPH2 mutants showed a reduced response to sleep deprivation. 
Furthermore, when we sleep-deprived mice, we found an increase in delta power, an established measure of homeostatic sleep pressure. But roughly ablated animals showed a much reduced response. Although this work addresses a long-standing debate in the role of serotonin in sleep, many questions remain. What signals regulate the sleep-promoting properties of the raffi? Which of the many targets of the serotonergic system mediate the effects of serotonin on sleep? What is the significance and underlying mechanisms of the opposite effects elicited by toning versus best stimulation of the raffi? You can rest assured that our crack team of tireless experts here at Caltech are working hard to address these questions.